Hello and welcome to This and That. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Beyer. Hello, Dave. How are you? Hello, Jonathan. Happy Memorial Day weekend to you. Happy Memorial Day weekend. And we wanted to get a quick this and that out to all of you as you head into the weekend. We were hoping that Fantasy on Ice would be shown on TV before we discuss this, but it's not. But we'll just start off that Yuzuru Hanyu is skating to Phantom of the Opera again, because that is what we need. Um, Okay. (laughs) You know, I love the energy he gives, but the music choices could really be more inspired. But he loves Phantom, and God knows his fans support him. So Yeah, there it is. I liked the costume, I'll say that. And it looked like he was giving full Hanyu performance energy in the Yeah, that's the clip you were showing me with the red and the black. Yes. Yeah, that it was very committed. So if if it takes that music to get you committed, I guess so be it. I mean he was full he was feeling a full phantom, and the Japanese fans were behind it. And okay. also, Javier is going to do a flamenco-type program, being very Spanish. Yes, he's also, which we love. Yes. He's at his finest when he's Spanish, in my opinion. He also, his, <laughs> his show is coming back next fall. Sandra and David may or may not do that. And um, the uh, he's going to do a summer camp with Tracy Wilson. So he his career is really... Uh, having a fabulous professional career, but you can I see- wonder how he is as an educator. I bet he's really enthusiastic. Like, I bet it's like a great energy. It might be, you know, he may have had to try harder than, well, he is very talented as well. I don't know, actually. Yeah, who knows? He is so natural. It's It's interesting which of those um, kinds of people may be great educators. Maybe he'd be versus- good about the psychological part. He might be, you know, ah. like what it took him. To- it depends, yeah. Yeah. You know, the ones that are that have to work harder for it learn more, so... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, because they have to go about it a different way. Or if they're like, hey, Javi, there's like a really unfocused but very talented kid at the end. Could you talk to him? Yeah. <laughs> Tell him your secrets? Okay. Yeah, so, I don't know. It, it, and it, it looked interesting. And Javier Raya is also in this show. He's friends with Hanyu. So he got to be in this. And props to him. They also, it looks like Medvedeva is there. So I'm curious to see the videos of this show um, when we see it. But... Nothing to report on just yet, other than the clips look spectacular as always. It looks like it will be setting. I didn't see any jumps from Hanyu, and I know that there is some speculation about his injury, but in the past, he's reduced his technical content and still been mind blowing here. So I yeah, think, on these like smaller rings and spotlights. I mean, I don't look, know. He is making so much money that he doesn't have to do as many shows as the other skaters, and he can still do it and enjoy it right. and do some shows in the summer, and yet. Um, not have to, you know, wear his body. He's had some time to uh, rest and heal, and that's fantastic. Because some of these skaters, you're looking like, well, Medvina, but you had that little bit of a hip injury, and yet you are still making all of the money from right. week to week to week to week here. So, but some skaters have to make the money while they can get it. Look, put it in that savings account because right. there's no guarantee of tomorrow. So, I understand, but look, there's some changes here that we. Uh, are going to discuss, but I want to discuss to you your Mia Hamada girls, Jonathan. You were just yes, talking about please. the Colorado <laughs> camp, but I feel like yes. Satoko and Rika are like your Karen and Debbie. So, uh, it's you're, you're Karen and Jill, <laughs> sorry. So, Satoko, remember, Mia Hamada wanted to separate the girls and have them use different. Which I think is very smart. Totally smart move. Give them In my separate. wildest thoughts, I never thought we would see Satoko. With Benoit, I just right. did not did not go there. Now we've said time and time on the show that it would be interesting to see if Benoit had a beautiful skater with you know all of the gifts that Satchiko had. With soft lines, yeah, and what what he would do, how much of his work is compensatory for the people yeah. he's working with, and what can he do with a real artist like this? I, I'm very fascinated to see it. I think it'll be interesting. It, She's it capable. could be angular, but it doesn't have to be angular. Yeah. So that's what I'm intrigued by. The, the pose of her looked a little curious, but if it's the short program music. Egyptian disco. <laughs> Yala Tabla and Percussion Solo Egyptian Disco by DJ Disa, choreographed by Benoit Richaud. Now, the free skate is another head scratcher. Just didn't picture it. Theme of Schindler's List, with the prelude in C-sharp minor, the Hatikva interlude, and a piano arrangement um, by John Bayless, choreographed by Laurie Nickel. 
would have never expected her to do Schindler, a Japanese girl doing Schindler's List, and yet using interesting parts that we don't see typically. Right. The Hatikva, right. which is obviously a really uh, spiritual part of the middle of the film. I'm, I think it could be a really special program. It's so, even though we talk about Schindler's List being like a war horse, it's so unexpected for me that I'm well, really curious. It, yeah, and we're probably not getting the same motif, right? Yeah. The red motif, which is what we're... And it's we, giving you some soul from Satoko that we don't... We know she has, and she's always like, music box, beautiful, or they tried the tangle, but I think... Lori's delving a little deeper here. And I, I worry about Septico with her relevance, with the jumps. I always wonder, like, is this going to be her last season? Like, what is, are we going to make it? Because these other jumpers in Japan are so strong. Um, but I think she's going to give a beautiful program. I hope that she does it well. Well, and it's interesting because, again, Schindler's List has been relegated to sort of tired performances, and it's obviously such I a... I do love it. I do love a show. I know, but now we're going to get two because Jason's will be very fascinating. The depth they can or cannot achieve with I'm it. I'm more excited for Satoko's. I just... Oh, I would be as well. I mean, I hope that Jason can give us more depth. He hasn't. So, I mean, he's... Obviously, I think he's a, a performer and can. And I think it will help. I just think that his flexibility with Yulia's, I'm imagining the construction being similar. Like, I'm thinking Jason's going to do his spiral with the leg kind of out to the side that he does a little bit during when Yulia would do hers. So I'm just picturing that it's going to be somewhat similar, but I hope maybe it's completely not and I'm off base and I, I have full faith that they can do that. It's just, I'm excited for Satoko's with the piano and the, and, yeah, the I think it'll be really... and the prelude. I'm like, this could be a really special performance. So, but that, but even still, like I can sort of imagine what we're going to get from that, but the Benoit one I'm most interested in. Okay. With this, what sounds like world music, they're using tabla and stuff like that. Like, okay. So even though I said we didn't, we ultimately did release the Rika footage because someone else had been um, releasing it earlier. So then the kind of the cat was out of the bag with what she was skating to. The announcement was out of the bag with Rika Kihira there. And she is she's supposed to be portraying a spiritual goddess that unites all the religions of the world in her free skate. Very Tom Dixon. Um, Tale as old as time. But... You know, I think they're pushing her to be more of a performer. And I don't know if artist is the right word, but they're really pushing her forward. They are trying something with her. And having her go to Shay Lynn, I think you're going to see more of a fun side of Rika than just... And there is a fun side, I think. Yeah. We have seen her smile and lighten up. And those dance videos that she does. Yeah. Although Ensu did one today to, I think it was Ariana Grande, but I was watching, I was like, that is why that girl has that performance quality. She works it in those. She knows how to move. She knows yeah. how to move, and she knows how to perform and emote through her face, and you were like, how old are you? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> all right. But, so I don't know this music at all, but she is doing Breakfast in Baghdad by Yoon Sun Na, choreographed by Shaylin Bourne, and I am very... Excited to see the Shaylinification of Rika. I think that's a match. I think it's a hit. Yeah. I think okay. I think she's going to give her something. It's going to be... Because that may not even be just about the program, but just tools in general on unlocking certain kinds of movements. I feel like Tom's very around. difficult conceptual program really works for Rika. She doesn't have that inner soul that comes out the same way that Satoko's does. But there's a strength to her, and she does have an emotive quality, but it's more a combination of a balance between artistry and jumps, for me, with Rika. Well, and it's, it's a bit more general with Rika. It's kind of general loveliness. Whereas right, but I think some of that is the short. The short was a little bit music boxy last year. Yeah. It was generic loveliness. But I think the free had something. It had a strength and um, a... A performance to it. She has to pick right music and vehicles, but right. I think that this will be, I think it'll move her forward if they stick with it. I think that Rika will be a great performer by the Olympics. I just think they're pushing her. It's, it's work. It's They're moving her forward. I think they're making right moves with her than just going the Lori Nickel route and keeping right. that special for Satoko. I think bringing in Shay is really, I like that Mia Hamada uses two different choreographers every year for her skaters. I think that's brilliant. Right, who are more than just creating programs. 
Because I think that that's a vocabulary. Do you think that's yeah. a problem that Michelle Kwan got in using Lori for both every year? And because eventually the judges wanted to see something new, and then when she did use someone new, it felt like it didn't work that first year in Salt Lake. Right. It just felt like. Right. Oh. Right. Well, see, that's what was, I, again, I always will eat my words because when Jason had Roheen do the short program, we finally did see a new version of it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's so easy for it to plateau, Maybe even it's... if there's a break away from it. Well, it could be easier for a choreographer to come up with one great idea instead of two at the same time for someone. Like, you can think of someone and get inspired maybe for one piece rather than two. It could be interesting to have that hit. So, right. right. And these are great combos. Shay with Tom and Lori yeah. with Benoit. Like these, it's showing they can actually do any style in, in a field where everyone's kind of pigeonholed. So allegedly Mihamada is really tough, similar to Terry in some ways. Like they're definitely, okay. they're definitely getting weighed all the time in Japan. And the jumps are small, like Terry's jumps. And, uh, Although they're giving you more quads in Russia, for sure. But I, I think she's a really tough coach, but she has that better vision with the edges and the, the quality, and that's right. why we respond to it so much. Right. So Now, um, speaking of quality, can you talk me through those IJS changes? Sure. So they're reducing the deduction for under rotations. It seems like it's going to be from a quarter to a fifth. Now, it's minimal, but it is probably significant for some of these. Well, it makes a big change. For someone yeah. like Vincent Zoe, when you're adding up points or something like that, like it will be. It's less damning. And then there's going to be some changes in the short for... It's good. This could be interesting. If you don't, if you mess up your spins, you'll get no credit. If you don't hit two um, revolutions in each um, rotation, sorry, in each foot, on each foot if you, in basic position. So if you're doing a camel, change camel, and you don't hit two, change two, full uh, position. So full spin is out. So if Medvedeva gets a V on her, you know, on the combination spin with a change of foot, she would get zero points. So you are going to have to work these spins rather than So v. why do you think they decided to increase the harshness on the spins? I don't know. Maybe they're tired of seeing people blow it. I don't know why they do that. The ISUH changes every flipping year. Yeah, because, like, here's the thing. Like, I am, yeah, do make some spin changes for the rules so that we can at least some more variance, that not everyone is doing the same formula. That would have been a great step in the right direction. But now, all of a sudden, it's now every spin is going to be more nerve wracking and tight because everyone's going to be so freaking out about the revolutions and I don't know that we were experiencing a problem where people weren't taking the revolutions and positions seriously. I mean, I don't know. They're just, I think, <laughs> I think it's really with Medvedev. I mean, that, that she would get zero points possibly for some of those spins where she wasn't hitting position or something like that. Right. So, and that makes a big difference. That's all it would take to knock you out. Um, yeah, if you get that V in the short program, it now means no points. For the, so that's interesting, um, unless I misread that, but that's my understanding of that. Um, other than that, they, they've added a feature for the layback. It was kind of unclear in ISU English what that really was. Um, and who stands to benefit the most besides Vincent from the under-rotation leniency? I think any of, the gr- yeah, Satsuko, any of the girls doing quads, but... It, but if everyone is getting the same deduction, it's not really, I don't know. It's the, yeah. it's 25 versus 20%. I mean, I'm like. Well, and now it was one of those things with um, what Tom was saying a little bit. He wasn't saying in his argument that you shouldn't not, you, you should ignore under rotations. It's just whatever the rule is should be. Evenly. You know, dis- evenly dis- applied. And that's just what. It's what's not happening. Whether it's, sometimes it's, it is, sometimes it's not. It depends. I think yeah. Tom was a little bit trying to appease the mother in that situation, but um, sorry, uh, but that's much to Mrs. Flats' chagrin. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, she was not happy that he did not defend Rachel that way. Um, mm-hmm. But she has a point. So um, Wakaba Haguchi is getting to see ya. And Bird set free. I feel like, I like this that. is a match. After she did the Adele, this feels appropriate. Yeah, and I love that short program from last season. She could do that forever. But Dan's macabre for Tersen Bayeva feels like obvious. Just add water. Yeah, I don't care. It's great music, but I don't know why she's she such an unimportant it. skater to me. It's just yeah. there's nothing that stands out. Um, now Conrad Orzel is going to give us Sean Mendez, which they both have that hair. 
They're right. both giving you like teen heartthrob vibes. Hopefully his skating could be more lax this year because that could be current. And Yeah, there's something very special there. So Yeah, now Kazuki Tomono is doing something with the ballet Chroma. I have no idea what this is. If you know it, please comment the ballet in, you know, link to it and would love to see it. Um, but Sota Yamamoto is doing East of Eden and he has a lot of, that feels like it's a match, I feel, the East of Eden for him and, and his development. That, that, that feels like a, a match. But there are other ones. Arthur Danielan is doing... I was just going to ask about him because I love his skating. We do love. His free skate is going to be the gladiator, which he doesn't strike me as a... I was like, you good in doing Gladiator. No, he's a bit of a softer, more lyrical skater, which is why I like him, which probably means he'll be a head case about the gems. But. And then Koya short is to Winds of Change. Um, I, I'm waiting for Aliyev, because they haven't mentioned Aliyev yet. Right? No, there was a little bit of an article about him, that he took off his... Um, his uh, accomplishments from his Instagram bio, and it now just says that he's a skater on the Russian team because he wants to start fresh with his with his uh, uh, profile. And he deleted pictures, and they made a whole thing about it in this article. Fine, so, fine, just hit your damn jumps. Because you, I you like go it. for it, honey. <laughs> now Torgashev is choreographing for himself, a real artist, and using war horses. Yeah, this is like here's my problem with this. If you're someone like you're Shay Lindborn and you're trying to move forward, choreographing for yourself to generic music always makes me worry that you are not growing or stretching, even though you or are able growing. or able to collaborate and work with other people. Like to me, it's not a just a testament of oh, you're interested in choreography. It's oh, why can't you work with a choreographer? I always feel like you learn more from other people while you're still developing and growing. Although obviously she does brilliant things choreographing for others. That it was just that Born and Kratz year was such a mess, but I think it really started with the music. It was, and, yeah. they, had, and they had a knee injury, so it was it was just damned from the start. And the judges were ready to move on to someone else. So they, but Torgashev using war horses choreographing seems like himself. It, I just I don't know. But interesting about programs we were reading that Hubble and Donahue. There was an article on NBC where they don't want to do the Senior B in September because it wouldn't really benefit them from ISU points as much anymore. Obviously, when you're looking at the three seasons, this makes sense because um, Nikita didn't go to the Olympics in 2018, so he doesn't have those points. The French have missed competitions because of injuries in the past, so they haven't done the Grand Prix Final or the second Grand Prix last year, it wouldn't really matter for Hubble and Donahue to do this event for extra points. And they feel like last year they rushed putting their programs together and that they would just would like longer time to get ready for Skate America. And I feel like when you're them, you can do That's that. That's the right move. That is the right move because you're going to rush otherwise. And then what I felt happened here and the is... the first senior beat, they're ready for September, which obviously the USFS wants someone to go to that event where it's like crickets in Salt right. Lake. Um, and for, they used to get great fields, but it, it is so... It's the first one. It's so hard to get people ready for that point. No one wants to do it at altitude right after Champs Camp. It's so early, so... Well, not when this is the team that has gone... From a world championship medal to world team to or world yeah. team trophy, and then done stars on ice, like yeah. get someone else to take advantage of that opportunity because that is an advantage to someone like poor Deanna who was always looking for every opportunity to make world. Yes, yeah. you, you know, and so let you know, I don't know, one of those those mid range dance teams go and collect their points. Yeah, let them do more. I think if they want to, you can. Yeah. Yeah, because Hubble and Donahue, I think, yeah, they need, they need those ISU points. And, and ice dance more than any other thing. It's That's hard to switch an, a free dance. Yeah. It, you've got to kind of get it right from the get-go, because even though we always hear about people revamping sections and stuff like that, it just becomes more cluttery, but there's no time to really just wipe it clean because there's been too much work and preparation done. Zach pretty much said that he doesn't want to be changing the free dance after every event. And she was like, well, we kept improving it. We kept improving it. Like, she was, is going more PC now that she's... Yeah, like, and he's like, let's just take more time and get it right the first yeah. time out. Yeah. yeah, and I think, again, just like you're saying with Born and Kratz, it starts with the music. 
So unfortunately, I don't know that. So I was thinking, I was listening to the Star is Born soundtrack, which I had downloaded after the thing. There is music in there that could be soulful. If they mix Shallow with other things, I feel like you could do something a little bit more unexpected, right? Than just giving you the La La Land audition genericness, right? Like there's music in there that's about a love story with a suicide and addiction and like, you know, there are other, there's a solo that Lady Gaga sings. I was hearing it while I was getting my hair cut yesterday and I thought, I was thinking about Hubble and Donahue and I was like, if they could mix this in, that would give that program, it would take it to the next level of emotional appeal than just the song we've heard, the, the shallow that we heard them at the Oscars. Yeah, and, and here's, here's the thing, like, if you're just, I understand it's noble to want to use a piece of music, something yes. like that. And that can be done very well in classical music because there's always so much variance within the piece. A lot of these kinds of pieces are mood pieces. So they start and finish kind of at the same level of mood, volume, energy, all that sort of stuff. So that's when in a free dance, like you were saying, if you're going to do almost all kissing you, whatever it is, it's too much of one level. Yes. And so the I and that's why we always giggle now going back to these 80s and 90s programs on the Patreon videos, because they literally just spliced it in completely randomly. So suddenly Tanya skates to like sexy saxophone music and then all of a sudden there's a peppy thing. And then, you know, so I think if they're able to let there be ups and downs and work on the build, they can have it much better. So yes. I hope they heed your advice that don't just try to do a song start to finish. Yeah. Um, and I thought you were really with me on that one, day. I was. I'm looking at the... No, 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 no. I'm teasing you. I'm teasing you. No, no, no. I was... I'm with you on it. I know. I know. I'm because the shallow is three minutes and 34 seconds. That's what I was checking. So they well need more music to fill that out. So they shouldn't. But what I'm them. saying is I hope they're not looking then for 30, 40 seconds of no. another piece. You have to make it down to two minutes two, and then go yeah. to two full pieces. So right. I was thinking that um, the music is that all right from the soundtrack would be really good for them. And I, uh, and you can look it up if you are a stars born person. And I was thinking maybe always, always remember us this way could be at, also perhaps adding that to it or mixing and seeing what you could come up with because you could come up with something that's really emotive yet people know and it's still with the same artist so it blends well and maybe add a little instrumentation in there and come up with something that really creates a mood and a journey and a story through this so maybe start with shallow but add the other and i want hubble spread eagling it like forward like remember when she did that like cool that she does those cool ass moves where she's using her core stretching over him like come on be that because you yeah, know i want signature moves i yeah. want them to say they are too important and too cool there is a cool relevant factor about them in the way there's that intangible cool thing about morgan and uh vanessa because remember this is a story about a star is born the female protagonist goes from a low to a high as the man goes from a high to a low. So I think this is all about the growth of Hubble being a dominant force. We know she loves to be dominant. So I think... Well, oh my gosh, they need those Christopher Dean things where she needs to lift him. <laughs> he needs to like, absolutely... Yes, right. like, yeah. is that all right? Couldn't you picture him like doing that Anisana thing? Like lifting yes. him? Like, yeah. Yeah. Him, him on her boot doing. Oh my god, is that gonna have a suicide moment? I would like a oh, Zach. God. Well, not. <laughs> oh, wait a second. Oh god, how many Carmen pieces have we seen where the person kills himself? Suddenly, when we break it out of context, where a star is born, it's offensive. Hold on, Hold on. Carmen was murdered. Mur Sorry. How about Juliet? How many times did we see Juliet kill herself? Well, not, Don't you not, remember not. Tiffany Stiegler killing herself over her brother in that love story when she's like. <laughs> That epic, timeless love thing. <laughs> yes. Come on, Jonathan. Somehow, turn up your game. We're losing you. It's it's too much. But I'm trying to... I know you have things to do and places to go and people to see. Star Andrews is giving us Christina Aguilera, which is so on the nose. And Yeah. Unexpected in some ways, but same very much in others. And we saw Tara and Danny doing a much better throw, lutz, slash, flip than they ever did with Jim. 
Um, it's still not the highest or the most distance, but it's much better than we've seen before. So they look like they are making some improvements. Um, and I just like that he's owning it, and he looks all sexy with his baldness. I hope he lets a little peach fuzz grow in. Okay. Right? Like, yeah, I think he could yeah. do, like, small hair. He doesn't need, like, full Kurt Browning, Scott Hall. Like, he could, like, give us some head, right? Like... Yeah. What, what do you have? Let that be. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't, I don't think we... Well, keep it short, though. Keep it short and tight. But a little, right? Because yeah. we don't... I'm... Oh, you know what? I'm glad that he's not just doing the, the fake hair in the can anymore. But I love that... It's interesting... We all do really cut our hair. We need a psychological change. I was feeling yesterday like I wanted to trim my hair and work on the sides because I wasn't loving it. And it changed my mood and outlook on the world. I was <laughs> like, okay. And that's the power of hair, Dave. Isn't that something? No wonder Tanya always had hairography. Hairography. Yes. <laughs> no, it's all about my Jill Trenary inner self. It's like... That's right. That's right. Except hers is like an upside down triangle. <laughs> I would go for the triple flip after Carlo told me not to again anyway. And then he could yell so, at me on camera. So, so in front of the ca uh, Yeah. Just, the 88. Watching those 88 Olympics was fun. Yeah. So we're, we're judging the 88 Olympics for Patreon. We just, uh, we recorded the 92. We're going to upload um, the free in the next couple of days. So we've got a lot of stuff coming up. More commissions for Patreon. So... We have two best of things that Daniel Lee, who loves ranking, remember he is our right. our big patron who um, does a lot of uh, college entrance, and so he loves ranking and stuff like that. He gave me this whole thing. He keeps changing it and changing it, but he's been doing that as well as 91 La Ligue he did. So he has a couple in there. The 91 Worlds All Around for Gymnastics has been commissioned, so I'll be doing that. Um, we also have the 98 Nagano Free Dance. And oh, oh, interesting. Okay. We're still, we have some interviews in the pipeline. Uh, hopefully you watch the Suzanne Rockland one where she talks about giving each athlete what they need to be successful. And I thought that that was a really interesting thing because so many coaches put themselves on the athlete. And it was an interesting point. Okay. And um, also um, the 88 men, the Battle of the Bryans was commissioned and the 95 ladies has been commissioned as well. So we have a lot of exciting stuff coming up on Patreon, as well as the 03 Nationals. We have a World Pro from 95. So if oh, you... Geez. <laughs> people are loving Patreon, Jonathan. Okay, have you okay. seen the comments? It is like, okay. it's it's people's happy place. So I think it's our happy place. So it's yeah, all, it is. It it's is. all it's, good. It's such fun to visit that area. I really feel like we're bonding. You know, it's not like we didn't bond before, but now we're yeah, watching Jill Trenary. But once we get to the nitty gritty of like the late 80s, early 90s, now we're really connecting. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about Carol being like. Oh. I know. <laughs> after after that pre-program. Oh, my gosh. Amazing. Oh, my gosh. I just, I love it. So, yeah, we want to know which of these programs are you most excited for? How do you feel about the Hanyu Phantom? Are you as excited? Which music are you waiting to hear about? Yeah. I'm waiting to hear about Alias. Yeah. Um, Papadakis is wrong for me. And the French pair, because I'll be intrigued which direction they're going. In. Yes. And I want to know, what is Madison Chop giving us? Short and free. What, yeah. are, what is she... Is there like a whatever Lola wants in her future? It's like, I'm... I'm we're manifesting, Jonathan. We are manifesting something Sending like... Sending it out like, there. Yeah, exactly. Like, maybe... <laughs> Is someone going to do Sweet Charity? Like, come on. You know, I love a Broadway dame. Like, yes. What are you looking forward to on this Memorial Day? Have a great weekend, everyone. Hold an edge and look sexy. Say bye. bye. bye.